Okay, and we are live. Alright, uh, so this class is combat scanning. Uh, this is meant mainly for people who are learning to FC because it, combat scanning is a very important, uh, if simple, part of being an FC. Uh, but anyone else that's here, uh, you can you know learn this as basically uh, you can bring probes along. There's a lot of ships where you can just bring probes extra, and it's totally fine. Uh, as in like um, you know fitting them on your ship isn't a big deal. Uh, or if you just kind of become a guy who brings probes, like T3Ds for instance, can fit probes really easily. Uh, so you can always load them on there. And then there's pretty much no ship in the game. There, I think, are a few maybe uh, that you can't fit probes on. Most of them, most of the smaller ships, their fits are going to be pretty severely gimped by probes. But uh, as an FC, you need them bad enough that it's kind of okay to gimp your fits in a lot of cases. So, uh, the first thing that we'll cover is just generally how to get probes to fit onto a ship uh, to fit into a fleet comp. So, I am recording uh, my PyFA, which is a fitting tool, and like an out of game application. So everything that I'm talking about, uh, I will kind of be showing on the video recording. So you can feel free to open up your fitting tool of choice, either PyFA or EFT, and kind of go along with this. Uh, or you can just check the video afterwards uh, so you can see exactly what I'm talking about, but I'm going to try to explain it uh, as well as I can, uh, even without the immediate visual aid. Uh, so, we'll take an example ship. Uh, the ship that I FC the Hyperfleet uh, Interceptor fleet with. And I will post the fit into fleet as well. So this fit that I've just linked, you can look in fleet, and you see it's kind of messed up because it has a probe launcher, a single compact shield extender, one coprocessor, two inertial stabilizers, a NATO fiber internal structure, and two uh, small processor overclocking units. So the first thing that you need to do when you're fitting a ship with probes is to get the probe launcher on. Uh, so a lot of ships don't even come by default with enough CPU to fit the probe launcher which is the case for the malediction. So when I'm trying to fit up a malediction to, with probes on it, the first thing I'm, I do is I put the probe launcher on there. The sisters probe launchers use a little less CPU uh, and are a little better at scanning, but they're quite expensive. I think like 40 million. Uh, so I generally don't use them on my FC ships unless it's already a super expensive ship. So once I've got that on, uh, my second goal for this ship was to see if I can get it to install line because when you're leading a fleet of uh, interceptors and hyper frigates, you're generally doing so against uh, an enemy sword fleet. And a lot of the times they're going to try to headshot you. So the way that I avoid this is by being an insta-line fit, and as soon as I land on the enemy fleet, I just warp myself individually to somewhere else so that they can't headshot me. So for this particular fit, uh, getting that insta, you know, the sub two second align was important. So after I had the probe launcher on, I had to add the coprocessor for more CPU and the two rigs, the two small processor overclocking units for more CPU. At that point, the probe launcher did fit. And then I added the two inertial stabilizers and the nanofiber internal structure so that my line time uh, was under two seconds. At that point, I had a little fitting left over. Uh, so it was enough to put that compact small shield extender on there just to give me a little more tank. I didn't have enough fitting left to fit a prop mod or weapons or anything else. But I went down my priority list, got priority 1, which is probes, got priority 2, which is instaline, and then added a little bit of tank where I could. So that's an example fit. Uh, and like I said, when you put probes in a fit, you're going to gimp it most of the time. Like, this is, you, no one would call this a standard malediction fit of any kind. Uh, but in terms of getting probes on it, uh, because I need to use probes in order to scan down the enemy as an FC, and, uh, and then sort of following up on that with the other priorities for fits. So now I will, let's see, do a different example. Uh, 
So here's an example of a cormorant FC fit. So this fit, uh, I kind of go through the same things. Uh, number one priority is get probes. And then my secondary priority with cormorants is that I want to be able to lock targets to the same range that a cormorant can. Uh, because I need to be able to see if enemies are dying or not, etc. So I put the probes on there. I put the two coprocessors in the lows, and that allows the probes to fit with a lot of extra space as well. Uh, and then the micro warp drive is important because I'm going to have people anchoring on me with micro warp drives on, so I need one as well. The two sensor boosters are there so that I can lock at the same range as my fleet members. Uh, and then I had room for one gun, and I used the same two uh, or the same rigs. Uh, so that it would fit. Uh, I think it doesn't necessarily need the ACR. No, it definitely doesn't, but I actually like translated this from another fit. Uh, so basically I took a regular cormorant uh, and, and sort of transformed it into an FC cormorant, which is a lot of times the easiest thing to do in the moment. Uh, but the reason that I have still the one gun on there is so that I can still check the different ranges, like the optimal range and so on, uh, of my ship and you know, so I know when to call people to switch to different demo types and so on. Uh, so, uh, you know, as you can see, basically you just follow the get probes and then your second priority, which is usually, uh, you know, to be able to still lock targets out to the range of your fleet mates so that you can track HP and know when to call secondary tertiary targets and so on. Okay, so another fit that I'm going to link you is a, a different way that you can look at things. So this next fit that I put in fleet, it is a ship that I can use to FC Cormorants, uh, but it's got a little bit different of a, um, uh, since it's not a cormorant itself, uh, it, it's got a little bit sort of different uh, style. So the Harpy has more low slots than a cormorant and starts with more CPU. So I was able to fit a probe launcher. I put three coprocessors in the lows uh, and then added some tank in the mids with the medium shield extender. I have a sensor booster there so that I can lock out to the same range as cormorants. Uh, I didn't need to use two because the Harpy has a default lock range longer than a cormorant, so I only needed one. And I have a target painter on there because that can uh, help to uh, help cormorants to hit uh, small, fast-moving targets. And obviously a prop mod as well, uh, so that I'm actually quite a bit faster than cormorants in this fit, but I can dial my speed back, or if the situation is fine for it, I can just be way ahead of the fleet and they'll all still be going towards me. I also added a tank rig because I only needed one CPU rig to fit everything. Uh, so you can see that you don't always necessarily have to be in the same ship as your fleet mates uh, when you're FCing. Uh, you just need probes. You need to make sure that your ship is uh, can lock out to the same range so you can still track targets uh, and is at least as fast as the ship so they can still anchor on you. So that's a, you know another way you can go when you're creating an FC ship uh, or a probe ship even to, uh, to do things a little differently than just trans transforming one fit into another. You also notice on most of these fits, if I have them updated properly, uh, they'll have 16 combat scanner probes. You only need 8 at a time, uh, but I find it's easier for uh, when you launch probes. If you have 8 more in your cargo hold, it will automatically reload them directly into the launcher. So that if you were to like go to the next system over, you wouldn't need to reload before launching probes again. Uh, and Tech 1 probes are not super expensive, so I always buy 16 with my fits. And that's basically, you kind of go from there. The bigger the ship, the easier it is to get probes onto it. Uh, most of the time, all you need to do is sacrifice whatever damage mods you have in your lows uh, to switch to coprocessors. Sometimes you need to add rigs to create more CPU. And sometimes all you need to do is just like take off a bunch of the guns. You don't, if you can help it, you don't want to give up any tank or any speed to fit probes on. You want to be as tanky and as quick. Uh, and you don't want to give up utility like being able to lock uh, at, you know, an effective range uh, in order to fit probes on. So, uh, that kind of uh, does it mostly for that. I will, I'll go through 
Uh, can someone throw me out a random doctrine that we have? Uh, caracals. Caracals. Car okay, so here's what I'm going to do. No, foons would be too easy, Carl. So I'm going to go and I'm going to grab our caracal fit. And you can't see this, but I'm doing this in Python right now. So I've got my, I've got the caracal fit in here, right? So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look and see, okay, high slots. We have five launchers, five high slots. So the first thing I do is just delete one launcher because I need a high slot for that launch, probe launcher. Then I add the expanded probe launcher, and I see immediately I'm like 134.5 CPU over. So the first thing I'll do is look in the low slots and say, okay, do I have anything that just boosts damage here? I do. I have three ballistic control systems. So I'll delete one and add a coprocessor. And I see I'm still 40.75 CPU over. So I delete another one and I add another coprocessor. And then I'm under. I have 58 CPU left over. Now if I was creating a specific FC fit, I might try fiddling with, um, you know, going one coprocessor and one rig, uh, so that I'd have an extra low slot to fit something else in, uh, you know. But for for creating something relatively quickly, it's as simple as that. Just free up a high slot, put a probe launcher in, and then add coprocessors co coprocessors till you have enough CPU. There's other things you could probably do if you fiddled with this. You might be able to like uh, delete a couple of the launchers and fit an extra PCS on, and maybe then you'd have higher effective DPS or whatever. But if you're just trying to take a fit, switch it to have probes as quick as you can, uh, then that's a pretty simple way to do it. So, does anyone have any questions related to fitting probe launchers on chips? If I uh, link my fit, would you say this was a bad fit? Uh, you can link it, I'll take a look. Uh, no, I'd say that's a fine fit. Uh, that is, uh, you know, there's basically, you know, if your priority is not to get insta line, then that's great because you have a prop mod so you can burn, you have a tank so you can take some hits, you have a target painter to help, uh, you know, people hit their targets and so on. Oh my god, what the fuck is this? Sorry, these pings are going to be on the recording. Anyway. Uh, so yes, yeah, this is kind of a s some somewhat standard FC Raptor fit. Um, so that's an, uh, that's definitely an option you can you have in, you know, if you're doing an interceptor or frigate fleet, uh, you can even just run that as a as like a fleet scout. Uh, you know, so you're like, hey, I'm in an interceptor with a micro warp drive, so I'm, I can still function as a fleet scout effectively. I'm you know immune to bubbles. I can burn perches and so on and so forth. But I can also probe things down and warp to them or you know, provide the FC with, you know, the FC can put you in a squad with a bunch of other interceptors and you can warp the interceptors onto targets if the fleet can follow you up, that sort of thing. So yeah, that's definitely, definitely a good one. I personally, like I said, I use the insulin malediction just because otherwise I'd get headshot constantly. Yeah, I was wondering about, is the malediction the only one you could set up for Instra line? Uh, hmm. I'm not sure. I think the Crusader you probably could as well. Uh, because it has really pretty decent base agility and a bunch of low slots. Really, what you need is a lot of low slots because you need you'll need help with the CPU via uh, coprocessors, but you also need a pretty decent base online time, which I think the Crusader has a pretty decent one. Uh, but I haven't tested all of them to see which ones you can get probes and a sub two second to line on. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other fitting questions? Is it possible to do a, a interdictor with a probe launcher? It is. Uh, again, it's kind of slot dependent. I know it works on a heretic. I have a heretic fit for that, but it's the same principle. You know, you add a probe launcher, like a, a, a bubble launcher, because without a bubble launcher, why the fuck are you an interdictor? Uh, and then an expanded probe launcher, and then you just add CPU mods until it fits. Uh, and then, you know, you kind of go from there. If you have CPU left over, you can fit some other stuff. If you don't, you can, you know, just kind of go with it. You know, obviously, you'd ideally want, on a dictor, you'd ideally want 
a probe launcher, uh, a prop mod, and tank. Probably in that order. Because without a prop mod, it doesn't matter how tanky you are, you're just sitting there and then you're gonna die. Popping a sec second bubble won't matter. Uh, and then if you have a prop mod, also having some tank so that you can survive the amount of time it takes you to move a bit and drop a second bubble. Uh, but yeah, a scanning interdictor is like really powerful and often unexpected. Uh, the reason why when I'm using when I'm like when we were uh, scanning down uh, boats cormorants and using and hitting them with a dictor, the reason why I was not uh, just like sitting in a scanning dictor myself and just doing it alone is because in that particular situation they're bouncing enough where you need to time the scan uh, very specifically and it's easier to do that when you have a short scan duration and being in a Kovops ship uh, with a bunch of uh, scan acquisition arrays I think is the right one. There's a mid slot module that makes your scans go quicker. Uh, so that's a little easier to do it with a two person setup but you also need coordination for that so it's a little harder uh, in a different way. But yes, short answer is yes. There's at least there's at least one dictator you can do it with. The heretic, I know you can, and you can test others as well. Any other fitting questions? Okay, well I'll let you stew on that for a minute, uh, and I am I have to step away from the computer for about thirty seconds, and I will be right back. He's definitely masturbating. <laughs> Wait, are you not? Always, <laughs> always, never not. It's Friday after all. It's uh, free your cock Friday, I think is the, is the term. Whilst he does this, I'm going to get more beer. Okay. So, uh, before we move on, anyone think of any other fitting questions while it's gone? Oh, okay, perfect. Uh, note to anyone who's watching the video recording, I'm sorry I swing my, camp my uh, EVE camera around constantly. Uh, if you get motion sick, it's not my fault. Can just look away. So uh, the next thing we are going to do is actually launch probes. Uh, so what you'll need for this part is a ship with probes fit onto it using the techniques that I described earlier. If you don't have them, that's fine. You can just watch the video after uh, uh, to check out, you know, what I was saying or what I was explaining. If you're in a ship that is bonus for scanning, this part might not work properly for you because what we're going to do is scan a target that is. Uh, hard to scan in order to fine-tune our probe arrangement or formation and if you get a a 100 percent hit on it you won't be able to tell basically like if you have it at 100 percent you can't tell if you're making things any better uh, because it won't show over 100 percent okay i'm closing irc sorry the ping noises Apparently we're missing some sort of dank fight. Rip. Oh well. Uh, okay, so. Can anyone remind me what the default hotkey for probe scanner is? Because I know I've changed mine. Is it Alt-P? Alt-P, alt alt yeah. Okay, so the default hotkey is Alt-P. I personally have it on Alt-D because I have D-scan on Shift-D, uh, probe scan on Alt-D, and then... Uh, uh, tactical overlay on control D. And I like to be able to just use those three very quickly. Uh, but Alt P is by default. So if you open up your probe scanner, uh, and for this particular uh, class and video, I'll be using the new probe scanner. So if you're still using the old one, I would suggest going to the options and check the box that says try a new probe scanner. Uh, I can explain if you hit uh, escape and then go general settings, the bottom left. Make sure you have under experimental features features try the new probe and directional scanners checked. So we open the probe scanner. 
And at the top left, you see a button that says Analyze. Once we have probes out, you'll click that button in order to tell them to warp to where you told them to and start the scan. Right to the right of that is a button that says Launch Pinpoint Formation, and that will just arrange your probes into a preset formation, uh, which is meant for narrowing down the location of a target that you've already located into a general area. There's Launch Spread Formation, which will scan in a wider area to try to find uh, targets that you're less sure exactly where they are. And then there is a button to the right of that, which is where you save and load custom formations. Right to the right of that is a button that says Recover Active Probes, and that will just pull your probes from space back into your ship. You rarely need to do that because uh, when you jump through a gate, your probes will automatically recall. They used to just die and self-destruct if you did that. God fucking damn it but they don't anymore. So below that, you'll see there's a section that says probes, and at the moment it should say no probes uh, deployed. And that will show you when you do deploy your probes, uh, the range each one of them is at, uh, and or in the sort of range setting that they're on. Uh, and we'll see that once we launch it. Below that, there's a section that says scan results, and it should say no scan result under it right now. To the right, you'll see a the first box which may say a certain number of things are filtered right now and if you hover over that or click on it you'll get a kind of a drop down where you'll have results for anomalies which are you know like the combat sites and stuff that spawn structures which are you know things like posses mobile depots MTUs etc and you have drones which are drones obviously cosmic signatures which are things like wormholes uh, dead space sites relic sites, data sites, and so on. And then ships, which is ships. Now you can create a new filter and basically go through and create a, a filter uh, like you would with anything uh, on your overview. So you can have a filter that will only show you things like stealth bombers or interceptors or hurricanes, etc. So if you think you find a, a use for filters, then you can go and set them up there. I probably should have some, but I haven't created any yet because I'm lazy. So for this, go ahead and uncheck everything except for structures, and just leave it like that for now. And then to the right of that, it will say zero ignored, uh, and that is for when you do a probe result, you can select results and tell your system to ignore them. And that will mean that if you do a scan again, it won't show up. So if there's like a bunch of friendly ships, you can remove them that way. Uh, and we'll kind of go into a little more detail uh, after we do this next part on that. So, at this point, I would like for you guys to launch your probes. You can do that by clicking on your probe launcher in the uh, in your little loadout. And I'm just going to watch my overview here to make sure that everyone has combat scanner probes. Do we launch pinpoint or spread? Uh, just launch the probes into space for now, and, uh, and we'll deal with the formation in a moment. Okay, looks like all combat probes. So, uh, now we can hit the button all the way in the top right of the probe scanner window, and that will open up our solar system map. So on this map, uh, you should see once your probes are out, they will be out in some kind of formation and in some kind of place. Uh, this map controls kind of just like Eve does, scroll, in, scroll, or scroll up, scroll down to zoom in and out, hold left click and drag around to change perspective, Hold right click and drag around to translate, or move left, right, up, down. And what we're going to do first is we're going to click the Launch Pinpoint Formation button in the Probe Scanner window, which is right next to Analyze. And you'll see that'll make this big ol' sort of overlapping bulbous formation. So the next thing you want to do is you want to grab a hold of this, so you'll see that there's a little box with a bunch of arrows in the middle. If you hover over any side of that box, it will highlight red. Or if you hover over in any set of arrows, it will highlight red. And when you click and drag while those are highlighted, you'll be moving the probes all together in 3D space along that axis only. So if you're trying to move it laterally, you know, across to a different spot in the solar system, you could click on the top uh, square of it in order to just drag it around uh, you know on the horizontal plane. You could individually click on the arrows to move it 
you know, x, uh, x coordinates or y coordinates. And then you can change your perspective and move it, the, move it around differently. So the place that we're going to try to center it on is going to be planet 9. And that's planet uh, IX in Roman numerals. So you want to drag your little box, you know, what I, this is how I do it. I, I drag my view so I'm looking from the top down onto the probes, and I drag the little box until planet 9 is sitting right in the center of it. And then I swing my camera horizontally so I'm looking, you know, straight on the solar system from the side. And then I drag my box up a bit. For the second part, I generally use the arrows just so it goes only up and down and I don't get any weird sideways turning. And then I swing it back up to the top, and I see, is it in the right spot? Okay, and then I swing it to the side, and I kind of rotate it around. And if there's any direction from which it doesn't look like it's relatively centered, then I'll kind of make little adjustments until it's right on the middle of that. Uh, okay, uh, I'm really dumb. How do you see the planets? Uh, the planets should be shown by default but if they're not in the top the very top left of the screen there's like this little balloon with a hole in it and if you hover over that it says markers and there's a bunch of markers you can turn on and off and you want to make sure planet is selected and if you're trying to find a particular planet uh, the planets are numbered from 1 through X based on their proximity to the Sun so the closest one is 1, 2, 3, and it goes outward from there. Planet 9 in this particular solar system is the second to last planet uh, from the sun. Or no, third to last. No, fourth to last. God, I can't count. And if you make sure you turn those planet markers on, just hover over it, and you'll see one of them is, let's say, you know, O1Y... Tech ED, uh, space IX. And also know you're not dumb, you're just learning, and that's the point of coming to the class. If you were dumb, you just wouldn't go to the class at all, and you'd never actually take it upon yourself to learn, so. Right, does anyone have any questions uh, about the stuff that we've just talked about in terms of the probe scanner window and moving the probes around? Is there a, um, a quick way to deploy your probes um, and move them onto a specific thing, or do you have to use move them during dragging the arrows? You can't say um, you can't like, for example, right click on Planet Nine or whatever, and it will have a context menu option. No, I believe there is no way to do that. At least not that I'm aware of. Okay, do. And it it does use some like limited uh, memory stuff. So like. If you launch probes in a system and then move them to a place and then click recall and then launch them again, their default location will be at that place where you move them to. You will still need to wait for them to warp from wherever you launch them to that location, but the actual formation that they uh, that their destination is will be the same. But if you jump out of the system, then it does some weird shit where it will like try to place them in the same spot in the new system. It's kind of obnoxious. But, yeah, short answer is, no, it's annoying, and you always have to recenter them. Okay, so, uh, at this point, you should all have your probe centered on Planet 9. And the first thing you want to do, so, basically, this is an extremely slow-motion version of me trying to probe someone down who I'm told is at Planet 9. So, we get the probes to Planet 9. And the second thing we'll do is we'll shrink the probe size down. There's a couple ways to do this. You can right click or select all and right click your probes in the probe window in the probe scanner and go to scan range and change it to 0.5. But that's kind of a pain in the ass. The easier way to do it is if you hover your mouse on the edge of one of the bubbles that's in your or one of the, you know, spheres in the in the uh, map we're looking at, you'll see the sphere will kind of glow. And if you click and drag, you'll see you can actually change the size of all the spheres at once. So you want to drag them basically as small as they'll go. At a certain point, they won't go any smaller. 
Yeah, you can use alt mouse wheel as well for this. If you're a weirdo. I personally like the draggy part uh, because I do some like exploration scanning as well. So it's easier for me to just drag them exactly to the size that I like get the feeling I'll need. So once you do this, you'll want to zoom in. And keep in mind on this window, you can double click either your probe cube or any of the planets uh, or any other uh, locations. Uh, and your camera view will actually recenter on that location. So if you double click on your little probe cube, you'll see your camera will move, and then if you uh, left click and drag around, you're centered directly on your probes. Uh, so at this point, if you zoom in so that your probes are you know, nice and big again for you, even though that we've shrunk their range down, you'll see that at this point, maybe you need to make some slight corrections to the positioning of them, because you've gotten you know, more precise by making them smaller. So make any corrections that you need to. And then the final step we're going to do is to uh, move the probes closer to each other. The way that you do this is you hold control, and you'll see that then you get all these little arrows, and as you drag them in and out, the probes will sort of coalesce on each other and go apart. And the trick to this is you want them very close to on top of each other, but not quite on top of each other. And part of this class is going to be uh, finding the right spot the right formation for the maximum percent and then showing you how to save it so that you only ever have to do this particular part where you're you know moving the probes closer and further from each other you only have to do this once during this class and then you'll have that formation saved so that in the future you can simply load the saved formation and then place your probes and then scan so if you set your probe scanner up like we did last time, or like, uh, sorry, like I told you to at the beginning, you should only have structures showing. If you still need to do that, you'll want to click the button, uh, or the drop-down menu to the right of Scan Results. Dear God, did I put the Mobile Depot in the wrong spot? No, it's there. For some reason, my results page is being stupid. Hmm, why is this happening? Yeah, it should be the CCN. Why is my results page not showing results? Hold on. I'm having some sort of difficulty. Let's try this again. I think my UI might be fucking up because I, like, hit escape lunch. Or there's something really stupid that I'm doing. No, I definitely don't have it ignored. Because I can see the results on the map, but for some reason they're not populating this list. And when I check uh, anomalies, nothing shows up. I'm having the same problem. Oh, no, no, no. I, I'm fucking stupid. Uh, where it says scan results at the top, if the arrow is pointing to the right, you have to click on it so that the arrow is pointing down, and then you get your results. Well, that's on video. Fuck. Anyway, okay, so, uh, as long as you just have structures there, what we'll do is, you'll see, uh, there's actually, you should get a shitload of results. Uh, you should get a bunch of what we call POS furniture, which is just like, uh, POS modules. Uh, and you'll notice there is a slight delay before your scan even starts. That's your probes warping from where you launched them to your destination formation. And then once they arrive at that location, then they <laughs> will begin to do the scan. And once the scan finishes, you should get results. What scam? Sorry? What scam are they doing? Not scam, scan. Oh. I was going to say, I want to get on some scamming. This is a class, not a comedy club. What's a class? Oh, I'm in the wrong channel. My bad. Alright. So, in a situation like this, uh, what we would do is we would actually use the um, 
ignore a function. So we don't want to find any of this other shit. We just want the one mobile depot. And in particular, this is the one that's hard to scan down because I've got the uh, uh, wet to mobile depot, which is difficult to scan. Not the yurt, which is like 200 million and almost impossible to scan. Uh, but you should see that as a uh, scan ID CCN tag 548. Now as far as scan results, every ship, uh, everything that you can scan right now that's in the system, ship structures and otherwise, has a unique ID. So uh, if you basically, if you get the same ID, you know you're scanning the same thing, uh, if that makes sense. So if a ship is moving around but you're not getting 100% results on it, as long as the ID is the same, you can be sure that it's the same ship, even if it's moving around and you're trying to find it. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to get this list uh, empty except for the CCN Mobile Depot. The quickest way to do that is to just right-click on the CCN Mobile Depot, scroll or go down the list to ignore other results, and click on that. So then your list will clear except for the one that you, that you right-clicked on. And then you'll see on the top right it should say something like 81 ignored. Those, those results will no longer show up on your scans until you either leave the system or until you click on the, uh, that drop-down where it says 81 ignored and clear the results, and at which point you'll be able to scan them again. Does anyone have any questions about uh, the stuff that we've covered thus far? All right. So you should have uh, an unsuccessful scan on this depot, hopefully. If you're in a bonus ship, you might have gotten a 100% hit. If you did, I'm sorry, but uh, what we're doing right now is, is based on not having a 100% scan. So what we're going to do now is basically you're just going to hold control, move your probes a little bit closer together, and hit Analyze again, and then watch that signal percent next to where it says Mobile Depot. Basically, you want it to go up. So when I just did it, mine went up 1%, or sorry, 0.1%, so I'm going to drag them a little bit closer. Then I'm going to scan again. Is it possible to lose percentage? Yes because you might see that's actually kind of what we're hoping for. So uh, mine went up another point one, so I'm just going to move them a little bit closer. So what you want to do is move them a little bit, scan, a little bit, scan, and keep doing that until you see the percent go down. And then you just back them off a little bit, and then we'll save that formation. From what I can tell, you can also just hold Control and just scroll up and down. Yeah, you probably can. I'm I personally just prefer to use dragging because, I don't know, I like the analog movement. So when I just did my my little, sort of a little bit closer and scan now, it went down by 0.1. So I'm just going to drag and back it off a little bit. And I know that my highest percent from this ship was a 68%. So I'm just backing it off a little bit. And it's back up to 68 so now I'm fairly confident that this is the strongest hit that I can get. Uh, it's possible that, you know, if you move your probes a little bit, get them a little bit more centered, you might be able to make another fine, fine, fine adjustment. But in almost all cases, this is kind of good enough. So does anyone have any questions about that while we wait for people to, to dial it in? How exactly does the overlap work? The thing is, it's using, you know, um, not triangulation, but whatever angulation. Trigonometry? Yeah, yeah, I guess so that works. Um, so if the probes, the closer together the probes are, the closer they are to the thing you're scanning, so the stronger a hit they receive when they scan it, However, in order to active, actively like find its location, they need to compare the distance from uh, the unit that or the thing you're scanning to each probe. And if your probes are too close, they'll start to actually overlap with the thing that you're scanning, and you'll no longer get a good positional hit on it. In practice, this means that you know if you know exactly where something is, you can get your probes really close to it. But if you set your formation too tight, uh, then you might end up 
uh, in trouble if you don't position your probes exactly perfectly on whatever Celestial it is. I'd rather back them off a little bit to have a little bit more leeway if I'm trying to quickly set probes onto like a planet or whatever so that I don't have to spend 20 seconds like zooming in and slightly adjusting and so on. So once you have your formation, and if you don't quite have it yet, uh, don't worry, we'll just, we'll stop this part for now, uh, and you can, you know, do this on your own later. Uh, I'll leave that mobile depot out there for a while. Hopefully no one kills it. It was only like 2 million esque, but even if they do, they'll just reinforce it. So it'll be out there for a little while uh, on Planet 9, so you can use it to, to hone your uh, formations in. Uh, but once you have a formation, if you go to the, back to the probe scanner window, that third button, if you hover over it, and then hover your mouse to the right where it says save current formation and click on that you'll be able to give this formation a name and then once you name it and hit enter if you hover over that same button you'll see underneath save current formation there will be a uh, a little name that you just put and if you click on that then you get your formation so basically once you dial that in you kind of save that formation, and then anytime you are doing a combat probe, uh, you know, doing combat probing, you just launch your probes, hover over that button, click on the name of your formation, your probes will go into that formation. You'll still have to place them, and you'll still have to shrink their range down, but you won't have to, like, move them uh, in relative to each other at all. You'll have that saved. I mean, does anyone have questions uh, about what we've covered so far? Okay, all right. So what we want to do now is take our probes in the formation that we've got, and we want to move them over to the station. So on your map, go ahead and move your probes over. And the best, w or the way that I'm kind of intuitively doing it these days is I drag the probes to whatever location. Then I double click on the probes to center my screen on them. Then I zoom in, and then I do my sort of top down view, double click, swing to horizontal, you know, reposition if I need to there, and I double click again. Basically, every time I move my probes, I double click to center the camera on them, so it makes it easier. And once you have your probes on the station, you want to go back to your probe scanner. We want to go to that uh, filtered menu, and we're going to change. We're going to uncheck structures, and we're going to check ships. And once you do that, then go ahead and hit Analyze. And at this point, we're going to be focusing mainly on the probe scanner window, so you can actually go ahead and close your map once your probes are in position at the station. Does anyone have any uh, having any trouble with uh, the last part moving the uh Okay, so I just got a, m a mail that people are upset that we have combat probes out. Fortunately, I don't give a shit. <coughs> Why would people be upset that we have combat probes out? Uh, because it's people scared, are right? doing weird stuff and they think that they're being scanned down, possibly. And then, you know, the problem is that A, anyone who's hunting riders is going to be just as terrified of those probes, and B, you shouldn't be ratting an ONY right now. Uh, anyway, sorry. Sorry if I come off as callous, but, like, whatever, dude. I'm going to run a class in our home system and people are going to have to get over it. Uh, so, we should all have our probes on the station. We switch the filter to ships, and then we've done a scan. Is anyone having trouble with that? Awesome. Okay. Uh, go ahead and scan one more time so we all have the same list. Or, you know, at least a similar list. So, you've got a couple things uh, going on here. So, we have the distance, which will show the distance that the result was from your ship at the moment the scan finished. You'll have an ID, which, I, like I said, is a unique identifier for that particular scan result, no matter where that ship structure, etc. goes. It will always show up as the same, uh, as long as you're still in system with it. 
Uh, I'm not sure the mechanics on whether if it leaves system and comes back, I think it might get a new ID. I'm not sure. Yeah, that refreshes it. Yeah, it seems session changes tend to do that shit, so, um, you know, keep that in mind. Uh, and then, depending on how strong of a hit you get, you'll get further uh, f further information. So if you get a weakest possible thing, you'll, it'll just say ship or structure or drone or something like that. Uh, if you get a little bit stronger, you'll get something like cruiser or frigate uh, or battleship. Uh, get an even stronger result, and you'll get something like electronic attack ship or uh, you know attack battle cruiser or you know whatever class of ship it is. And once you get you know closer and closer, you'll get more information about the specific type of ship it is, and the speci specific group, and so on. See, we got a bunch of results for basically a, a lot of things that are on grid. Um, and you'll see, you'll be able to see from here, you know, the relative ease of scanning things based on, you know, your current skills. Uh, there's going to be some stuff that shows up just fine. Uh, if we go ahead and uh, order this list by distance, so if you click where it says distance at the top left of all the results, uh, you'll see things that are closest to us uh, and on grid at the station tend to have the best hits and the things that are further uh, tend not to. You'll also notice that things that are too close to warp to will simply show a 100% but will give you no warp button. But things that are uh, things that you get a 100% hit on that are at least 150 kilometers from you, you'll get a little warp to uh, button you can click on. Or if you right click, you'll get all the same menus. Uh, if you're in a leadership position in a, sp in a fleet, you'll get the same buttons that you would uh, clicking on a Stargate or anything, you know, Warp Fleet 2, Warp Wing 2, Warp Squad 2, etc. And within this window, you can do the same things. Uh, you can right-click on Ignore Other Results to focus in on one ship. You can right-click and Ignore Result to remove one ship. You can s use Control A, uh, and then right-click and hit Ignore Results to get rid of everything. You can select individual ships, you know, if you hold control or shift and click on a bunch of ships, you can select multiple things and then, you know, right-click and ignore them individually or as groups. Uh, and this is pretty useful because, uh, for instance, if I'm jumping into a system and I'm reasonably confident that probes are probably going to be used, uh, what I'll do is I will actually, and you'll see this if you're on an op with me, I'll jump into a system. Uh, and I, if I, th sorry, if I think I'm going to be fighting in that system, I'll have the fleet align or I'll warp us to a ping or something, and then you'll see my probes go out. Uh, and if you pay attention on a D scan, the first scan I will do is my own fleet. So I'll put the probes directly on top of my own fleet. I'll scan my entire fleet, and then I will, on the results, I will do Control A to select all of them, and then I will right click and ignore result. So that means for as long as uh, we don't go through another gate my fleet members are not going to show up on any scan results. So if I'm on grid with an enemy and I have probes, and I do a scan, uh, all the ships that show up on my list are going to be enemy ships, or at least most of them, you know, if we get, like, stragglers, etc., new people show up, they'll show up on there, but it, it will, you know, remove the bulk of my fleet from the re uh, results window, which is important. So there are different situations where your probe results will be ordered differently based on what you're trying to do. Uh, for instance, if you are just trying to, you know, let's say there's a White Legion Union gang, and you want to land on them at zero, uh, there's a couple things you can do. You can do a scan, order by distance, uh, and try to compare. Uh, you know, if they're going away from you, you can try to warp to the farthest one away. Uh, if their anchor is in a specific ship type, like a Lachesis, you can look. You can order by name, uh, and then look for a Lachesis and try to warp to that. The thing to keep in mind is that the positions that you will be warping to uh, from a scan result are saved the moment the scan finishes and don't update. So the longer you wait to actually warp the fleet, uh, the sort of more the target ships will have moved by the time you land. So getting good at combat probing a lot of the time is getting good at quickly identifying what it is you're looking for, whether it's a distance or a ship type, uh, and warping quickly uh, based on that information before ships have moved too far. And when you're looking at um, 
you know, like some massive fight, like the ones we had in Serenade over the past couple days. Most of my combat probe warps, like during the Talwar fleet, uh, were just based on distance. You know, I would basically say, okay, the hurricanes are at this or that distance, and I'm looking for one that is specifically 352 kilometers away, and I try to find it. You know, I try to watch uh, one. I try to watch on the battlefield right as my scan is finishing to see, uh, you know, which ships are at what distances, and then try to find the right one in the list. Uh, and the more ships there are, the harder that can be. I mean, as you guys saw, uh, if you were with me that day on the Talwar fleet, you know, at one point I was like, okay, take this warp and primary this guy, and then we had warped completely to a different guy than I expected us to, uh, and landed on the station at zero, so then I just had everyone dock up. Uh, because, you know, when you have 500 ships on field, it's really difficult to figure out which one you're actually scanning, uh, because all you get is the ship type and the distance, so it's, you know, unless you have a specific, unless there's a ship type where there's like only a few of them and it's easier to identify and filter, you know, sometimes that can be difficult. But that's the part where experience will come in handy. And that's kind of, I think that's pretty much everything I've got. Uh, other than that, you know, uh, I think you can open to questions and uh, and kind of dig deeper into some of this stuff if anyone has any questions. Uh, go ahead and yes. feel free to uh, type a Q into Fleet Chat if you have a question, just so we can go in order. Okay, Hatsun, what's up? Can the probes actually scan down a cloak target? No, your cloak targets do not show up on probes or D-scan. Storm delay? Yeah, I was wondering, uh, how much time do you take usually to scan someone down? Uh, it depends on... Like, most of the time, like, I've gotten pretty quick at launching the probes and positioning them. Uh, most of the time that it takes is generally, like, looking through the results window to try to figure out exactly what you know, which ship I'm looking for. Um, sometimes it's pretty easy. Like if I'm chasing Sword Fleet, uh, I can just warp to anything that's at the proper range. You know, like if I know the entire Sword Fleet is about 350k away from me, I just mm -hmm. have it set to distance, and like immediately my brain, you know, you look at that list, and you see there'll be a large swath of interceptors that are about 350k all bunched up together in the list, and I just right-click one of them and warp fleet. Um, but sometimes it can be more difficult depending on what you're doing. You know, if I'm trying to scan down the White Legion Munion Fleet and I'm trying to warp to Elo Knight's Lachesis that's in front, right? So that I can kind of like land and I'll be on top of them. Uh, if I finish the scan and it takes me more than like five or six seconds to find uh, the Lachesis in the list, most of the time I'll just do another scan and try it again. Uh, because if you wait too long, then, you know, you land too far behind something if it's moving. Okay, so you're looking mostly less than 10 seconds overall? Yeah, it's kind of... What you, I mean, you know, you have your, like, I think it's a 6 second by default scan time, maybe a little longer. Uh, if you're in a scan ship, you know, if you're, like, really dedicated scanning and you're in, like, a co-op ship, you can fit modules and their skills that affects it as well. Um... But yeah, you don't want to spend more than, like, you have your initial setup where you move your probes, but you don't want to spend more than, like, five seconds looking at your results list before you actually warp. Otherwise, your results are going to be too old in a lot of situations, you know. It depends. If it's, like, a remote rep dummy yeah, yeah, and it's I'm just busy. sitting there, then. Okay, thanks, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, Vitiate. Ooh, I have a question. How important are scanning skills for this? And is it something that's already built into the new bean skill plan? Or is it something that new beans should like plan around? Uh, well, scanning skills, I can tell you that I operated just fine with uh, astrometric, or astrometrics, which is the like main parent scanning skill. Uh, I'll link that. OK, Storm really linked it. Uh, I operated just fine with that at 4, and the support skills that Storm has also linked at 3 for a long time. Uh, I can tell you that um, even having astrometrics at 3 and the support skills at 3 is probably okay for a lot of situations, uh, but you will find yourself you know, getting not-so-great hits on things like interceptors with Mark Warp Drives Off uh, and stuff like that, 
especially in a non-bonus ship. Uh, so, you know, I waited until I was on my intelligence memory map, and now I have everything to 4 and astrometrics to 5. Um, but, you know, that's just because that was kind of part of my... Like ever since I joined Horde, I kind of doubled down on training FC skills, so, you know, I trained probing to be a better FC. I trained Wing Command 5 and Fleet Command and Blinks and so on. Uh, but if you're, if you're not... S you know, if you have other, other stuff that's more important to train... Like, I can tell you, I trained all frigates, destroyers, and cruisers to five of every race before I, you know, trained astrometrics to five, so it's not super duper important. And you can practice on the undock, you know, uh, and just scan and say, like, hmm, you know, I'm not getting a lot of 100% hits on a lot of these ships, maybe I should, you know, take some time to train astrometrics up to four uh, and get the supports up and so on. Uh, as far as the new beam skill plan, I have no clue what the skill plan is right now, so I couldn't tell you. But if it was a bait question and you know, then you can say. Oh, no, I honestly didn't know. Okay, yeah, I, I'm not sure either. I don't, I'm not sure if it is in there. It's probably in there for people to use it to go exploring and make esque. Um, so maybe it is. Uh, but I would say if you're not, if you aren't using it, if you aren't doing exploration and you're not going to FC, then I wouldn't worry too much about it. Uh, if you are doing exploration or FCing or both, uh, then it's pretty important to have a decent amount. Okay, uh, Sakiyama Maki? Uh, my question was, are we allowed them to uh, do practice combat scanning in O1Y, since you just got that email? I'd, until somebody actually tells us not to do it, then yeah, just practice in O1Y. Because honestly, like, where are you going to practice It's not going to freak somebody out? You might as well practice in the safest system in our constellation. Uh, so if people, if individuals have problems with it, you can send them to me. Uh, and if uh, if we get enough feedback, then I'll figure something out. But it should be fine. If oh sorry, uh, could I ask a question? Yep. If um the, the mobile depot, okay um. <coughs> I can't get better than 54.6% at the moment. Mm -hmm. I've been trying for quite a while. Yeah, that's um, probably the best you're going to do because it's a, like that mobile depot I chose specifically because I didn't want anyone to get to be able to get 100%. I can tell you with my Astrometrics 5s and supports at 4, I only got to 69%. So. Ah, okay. Yeah, so it, it's merely the the mobile depot part is merely about getting as high of a number as you can. You're not going to get to 100 because uh, if you were able to get to 100, then you wouldn't be able to see if you got to 101 or 102. It doesn't display that. So it would have been harder to find the, the best, the very best formation, if that makes sense. Yeah. But if you scan ships, then you'll start to see, um, you know, once you get your formation set, then you'll kind of be sure that you, like, you don't need to fuck with your formation anymore, because you've already got the best one that you can. So then, when you do scan on ships... You know, if you don't get 100%, there's no way you're getting 100%. You know what I mean? You don't have to spend all that time like, well, maybe if I move them slightly, I get a better result. Because you already fine-tuned your best result on that mobile depot, uh, and then you can just use that formation. Uh, any other questions? And feel free to ask about, you know, specific situations in probing, FCing, etc. Uh, anything that comes to mind. When you do your control click and tighten up your scan range, uh, how how close do you usually get them? I know if you get too close, then the results go bad. But well, is that's, there like a rule of thumb. I mean, that's why we have that's why we have that depot out there for you to practice on. So you want to try to practice on that depot and get your formation to give you the the highest number possible that you can get. You know, keep moving them closer until the number starts to go down again, and then back them off a bit. And then, uh, you know, hover over that third button and click Save Formation and give it a name and just save it. So then anytime you launch your probes, you can just hover that button, click on the name of your formation, and it will automatically assemble them into that formation. And you don't have to worry about spending time doing that every time you try to scan something. Uh, this may have already been covered, but... Um, so when you drop your probes, do they default to on-grid with you? So, like, if I'm trying to quick scan something on-grid with me, I can just drop hit my formation and scan? Uh, no, unfortunately. 
your probes do drop directly out of your ship onto the grid, but the actual formation is... I honestly... It would require a bunch of testing for me to be like, well, these are the situations where this will happen and this will happen, but it seems just kind of... It's probably not random, but they're almost never going to be already in a place where you need them. So you're almost always going to have to load your saved formation and then move them to where you want them, even if where you want them is right on top of you. Because when you, when you drop them, the actual formation that they'll take and the position they'll go to when you hit Analyze is denoted by where they are located on that map and not where you actually drop them in space. So a lot of the times they'll just be like in spread formation centered on the sun, or they'll be in whatever formation you used last at whatever XYZ coordinates you used last in whatever different system that has a completely different solar system. Uh, so you'll pretty much have to position them every time you drop them. Which sucks, but what are you going to do? Also, I kind of don't want to live in a world where you could just drop probes, hit, hit scan, and immediately get an on-grid scan. That would be fucking terrifying. That would be, that'd be very sad. But it'd be great against Sword Fleet. True. The real key to Sword Fleet is when you're scanning them down, uh, just save the position every time. And after a while, you'll see that you've got all their bookmarks saved and you no longer have to scan them. Because you just right-click on the bookmark in space and warp to it. And that is another trick. If you're fighting someone and they're bouncing around and you're scanning them and trying to land on them, just start saving the positions you land at because you'll start to see that maybe they're landing at a bookmark over and over again. And then you poop on them. Oh, um, is it true? I'd heard somebody say, but I'm not sure. Uh, is it true that you can bookmark your probes location in space? Uh, I don't think so, but maybe. It doesn't seem like it. If you can, I don't know how to do it. Uh, yeah, man and all. Boat uses the same bookmarks over and over again a lot of the time. He just he has this weird thing where he like uses some on some days and others on other days, so I haven't been able to catch him with my secret surprise yet. So you could potentially just find out where to purchase that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, like if you if you really start to scan a lot and pay attention, like you see a lot of people will have habits. Uh and if you can prepare for their habits by saving locations where like even if you know, if you're on the undock with your probe ship, right? And White Legion lands and you just launch probes and scan them down wherever they landed at and save that location, you might notice the next day that when they come they land on that location. And then the day after that when you hear they're in E Z on the way you can get like a shitload of thrashers fleeted up and then as soon as they enter warp from the, the end gate you can just warp your thrashers to that bookmark and then they'll land on top of you and then you you know murder zone them or get killed but you know either way but it opens up possibilities you know it gives you more tools uh, with which you can make fun stuff happen no. As an addendum, I just did an experience. You can right-click and save location on your probes, but I don't know if that has any practical application. Yeah, it doesn't seem like it would. Were you right-clicking them, like, actually on grid in space or on the map or what? Uh, that was just on my overview. I right-clicked them and oh, okay. save location. So I don't know that you can do it, like, in space. Yeah, right I mean, it would be different if you could, like, place one, uh, place one somewhere. And then to do deep save, save it on the map, but I don't think you can right I think you can just right click them when they're on grid with you. I suppose you could <laughs> uh, that would be so inconsistent. If you were the fucking godlike, you could like send your probes to a ping. Since the grids are so big now, it wouldn't be impossible to do. Like, try to squish your probes as close together as possible and put them right on top of yourself in the map and warp them and see if you can give yourself, like, a ping, and then you can, you know, if it lands 8,000 kilometers away from you, you can right-click it, save, and then warp fleet to that location, but I don't know. That's that's reaching a bit. I feel like it would be easier just to, like, warp to a random celestial. Yeah. That's what we call hot dog in it. I apologize again on the recording for my constant camera swinging. I can't help it. It's too much fun. 
All right. Any other questions? Anyone can think of anything? Okay. Uh, so, in conclusion, uh, if you're going to FC, always have probes. There's almost no excuse for not having probes. It's pretty easy to transform a regular ship into a, a probing ship by making slight fitting adjustments. Uh, in the smallest cases, like the smallest ships, sometimes you have to use rigs and stuff in order to make it work. So for those, you'll want to, you know, uh, have ships ready if you're planning on leading frigate fleets. Have fit up frigates with probes already. Um, but anything destroyer up, you can just kind of take a regular fit one and transform it most of the time. Uh, if you don't have probes, you're going to be severely limited. But even if you do have probes, if you're not used to working with the probe scan result window, uh, it's going to take you too long to look through the results and find what you're looking for, for it to be of any use. So, practice it. Uh, practice, you know, like looking at the grid, turn on, you know, friendlies uh, on your overview and pretend that they're enemies and, you know, do scans and try to identify this or that ship within the probe result window as quickly as you can and warp to them and that sort of thing. Uh, and then start using it on fleets, you know? Uh, it's 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 really satisfying when you can call your fleet to align to whatever ship and then eight seconds later just warp your fleet straight on top of them. Um, you'd be surprised the kind of frags you can get. People just don't expect it. Uh, so, yeah. And uh, as far as more advanced stuff, like scanning people down who are trying to bounce around a system and so on, uh, that's a li little bit more of an art. Um, and I suggest people do a bunch of exploration probing for wormholes and stuff like that before you start trying to do that, because that requires more of like spreading probes out and getting inc incomplete results that are like, you know, different displays that show like either a sphere that contains the target or a ring that the target is along and so on, and it's a lot more in-depth. Uh, and isn't really uh, isn't really something that I think is worth the time for an introductory class. So, with that, I will say thank you guys all for coming. And if you have any follow-up questions, you can pose them to me. Uh, or if you have any comments, you can post them in the thread in the information forum uh, with all my lectures and classes and stuff. And uh, let me know also in that thread if there's any other classes that you'd like to see. Just make sure to post them in the thread because if you say it right now, I might forget, etc. So, uh, and yeah, I'll see you later. Cheers, everyone. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks very much.